Hey everyone, massive July 4th sale, 20% off the entire site until July 10th. We would be honored if you would join us. In episode 4, A New Hope, we plunged headfirst into the galaxy of the Galactic Empire. We saw their new weapon, the Death Star, and learned that the Emperor had finally dissolved the Galactic Senate. Permanently. But how did one man maintain control of the countless planets throughout the galaxy? Fear was the stock and trade answer. Fear of the Death Star, fear of the Imperial Navy, and its countless Star Destroyers. But galaxies aren't run through sheer fear, and the more practical answer was through regional governors or moffs. These moffs were political rulers that were loyal to the Emperor and served the good of the Empire before the good of the star systems they governed. These loyal men and women often came from the Clone Wars, like Governor Wilhuf Tarkin. Others came from sheer ruthless will, like Governor Yolinda Price in Rebels. Many of them ruled where they were assigned, while others requested to rule their home worlds, so they beat it into submission. After the formation of the Empire, Lord Vader asked to rule a world of his own. The Emperor was pleased with the request and offered him either Tatooine or Naboo. He offered Tatooine so Vader could make it a sea of glass and destroy all those who enslaved him. He offered Naboo because of what it meant to Vader through Padme, and also to show Vader the high esteem that Palpatine had for him since it was Palpatine's home planet. Ultimately, Vader chose Mustafar. So who would get Naboo? Who would the Emperor hold in such high esteem and trust enough to be the moth of his home? He needed someone he knew intimately, someone who would be completely loyal, and someone who would take great care of his beloved Naboo. Sayo Bibble, the longtime royal advisor and governor of Naboo, may have been an option but ultimately chose to retire from public service after Padme's death. Instead, the Emperor appointed longtime friend Quarsh Panaka to be the moth of the entire Komal sector, which included Naboo and its moons. Captain Panaka had been head of Queen Amidala's security force during Episode 1, and was overjoyed when Palpatine was elected to the Supreme Chancellorship. It's like having a friend being elected ruler of the world. Panaka was fiercely protective of Queen Amidala, but his relationship soured with Padme in the years that followed the invasion of Naboo because he wanted to turn Naboo into a great military power in order to thwart off future attacks. However, Padme only wanted to build an Ion Pulse that would disable any threat that was outside Theed Royal Palace during an invasion. Panaka didn't feel that it was enough, since it didn't involve any army or weapons. His militarism certainly was something that Palpatine would have admired, since the Empire was all about military might. It would have also made Panaka more loyal to Palpatine, since Sheev was doing something that Panaka fought so hard for years earlier. Because of Panaka, and Palpatine's desire for military power, Naboo ended up hosting one of the Empire's military garrisons, and Naboo prospered during the Age of the Empire. Naturally, no one wanted to slight the needs of Naboo since it was the Emperor's home planet, so its economy and environments boomed and were regarded to be far superior to most other worlds in the Empire. Naboo's queens continued to be elected during this time, but Moff Panaka was the supreme ruler of the planet, and their position was largely a figurehead, although he allowed them to operate as freely as possible. Over the years, Panaka enjoyed the prestige of his position, but was a far kinder and benevolent moth than most others. The people generally liked him, including Padme's parents, even though they may not have agreed with his loyalty to Palpatine. About three years before the Battle of Yavin, Moff Panaka hosted the Queen and Princess Leia Organa at his chalet on one of Naboo's moons. During the meeting, Panaka was awestruck by Leia's resemblance to Padme, while she wore a traditional Naboo jubilation dress. Leia was there to talk about the working conditions of the local spice miners, but Panaka kept asking probing questions about who Leia's birth parents were and if she had been adopted. By the end of the meeting, Panaka suspected Leia was the long lost child of Padme, and he intended to warn the Emperor of her as soon as she left. Panaka had no idea about Padme and Anakin, so his motives were pure, but it would have spelled certain doom for Leia and would have unraveled the entire Skywalker children's secret. Fortunately for Leia, but unfortunately for Panaka, he never had the chance to warn the Emperor because he was killed in a bomb assassination plot by Saw Gerrera's partisans mere minutes after Leia left. Leia's adoptive parents, Queen Breha and Bail Organa, were angry about Panaka's death since he was a good man and one of the Empire's best moths, and they felt they could have worked together to help struggling citizens of the galaxy. It's unclear in canon how Palpatine felt about Panaka's death, but it says a lot about the guy if Sheev was willing to turn over his home planet to him. I imagine it was because Panaka was someone so loyal to the Emperor 
Emperor that Sheev could push him around if needed. So what do you all think? If you were Sheev, Palpatine himself, would you have chosen Panaka? Or would you have chosen someone else to beat your home planet into submission? Maybe you'd rule it yourself. Please hit like on this canon video if you enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.